slide one of my uh, supplemental material and um, I put out these equations and I don't ever expect you to uh, memorize them or know them or anything like that. These are out of electromagnetics. You could find it in like an engineering electromagnetics or physics uh, electromagnetics uh, class. And what I'm showing here is the vector diagram again, and I have the net magnetization, which I call M0, and we apply a 90 degree X pulse, or we could call that a pi over 2 X pulse along the X axis, and that puts the, next, the uh, X magnetization in the uh, XY plane. At that point, it begins the, mag the net magnetization begins to precess. That means go around the XY plane. And so here, I've just put out some notes. And after the uh, application of the pi over 2 pulse, the net magnetization is in the XY plane. The magnetization will begin, I should say here, uh, to uh, precess around the external magnetic field. So the external magnetic field is the superconducting magnet that's in the NMR room. And this precession, um, the driving force which makes it go, is the inherent angular momentum of the atom. So inherent just means built in, just like you know uh, atoms have mass, have charge, protons have charge. Inherent just means it's built in. And so uh, angular momentum is a built in feature of uh, atoms that have a spin of a half. And they precess at a frequency given by this formula. I'm not deriving it or anything like that. You can find it in any NMR textbook, but it's just minus gamma B0 over 2 pi, where gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio, and for protons, that's uh, 2675221871 radians per second dot tesla. So I've given here an example. If you had a uh, B0, this is a magnetic field of 11.74 tesla. Um, what is the precession frequency for protons? And so uh, I've given you the proton gamma, and you can just plug it all in here, and you get 499.86 megahertz. So we would call this magnet at 11.74 a 500 megahertz magnet, because they always just round up. And we call that the, basically the nominal uh, frequency of the magnet would be 500 megahertz. Because no magnet in the world is going to be exactly 5. It's going to be 499 point something or other. And the reason why I threw these equations up here, I guess I forgot, is when you're processing, it, that creates a time varying magnetic field going around. And you have the receiver coil around, around the uh, XY plane. And by this first of the Maxwell's equation, this is called Faraday's Law of Induction, a time-varying magnetic field will create an electric field. And so this del dot, uh, del cross E, this is the uh, electric field. Del dot, del cross is the curl of a vector field, and del dot is the divergence of a vector field. That's all what these mean. Like I said, I don't ex ever expect, but I just put it in there for completeness. So we have this processing magnetic field. It induces a, a electric field in the uh, receiver coil that we measure as a voltage. We measure as our FID, the free induction decay that I talked about l earlier.